speak with the Minister of Labor, who has been meeting with them, uh, himself a medical doctor, a trained med medical doctor before uh, his voyage into politics and all that. Senator Chris Ingige, Senator Dr. Chris Ingige, for the essence of this conversation tonight, joins us on the program. Minister of Labor and Employment, thank you so much, uh, distinguished and honorable minister, for joining us tonight. Thank you, Sharon, for having me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The essence of this conversation tonight is mm -hmm. to let Nigerians understand the position of the federal government. The doctors have been talking and they've gone on strike, but the stance of the federal government necessitated we, the invitation to you so that Nigerians can understand where the federal government is coming and what you have done and what you have not done. First and foremost, it's a moment in our, in, in our life that there is now a surge in the uh, COVID-19 cases in Nigeria. Not a good time for doctors to go on strike. So let's begin. Honorable Minister, we had a conversation uh, sometimes in April last year yeah. about the demands of the doctors. Out of the 12 demands... April that, this year? April this year, sorry. Yeah. Out of the 12 demands, how many of those have you met? Now, uh, Shego, uh, thank you again. You see... I don't want doctors to bring down our profession, these young ones in particular, to a situation where uh, people will start making caricature of doctors. Some of us will resist it. I'm a medical doctor by training. I qualified in 1979. I worked in the clinics and hospitals, salesmanship, uh, medical officer, uh, went for in-service training, health system management, and I became a health system manager and administrator. So when I'm talking, I talk from the vantage point of this wealth of experience I've gathered in that industry. I don't also want to talk that I, 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 I was a governor and managed health institutions with my commissioner for health. I don't want to talk about being a senator and with uh, Dr. Okowa, Senator Dr. Okowa, we authored the Health Act, the Health Bill 2013 that you are now saying, in the Seventh Senate. So when uh, the young ones are overstepping bounds, it worries us. I will crave your indulgence. Get back to that your timelines of actions that you displayed here so that I can talk about them, Syriatim, as a conciliator, who are mediated between them and their employers. I'm not, I'm not their employer. Why is it on your screen? I'm not their employer. Look at it. That's the timeline. Yes. 31st January. Mm -hmm. They issued notice and told us that we have these demands. I called them. We held a first meeting in February, I now invited them to come with the employers for reconciliation. Because what I did with them in that February was like I had one side only. So I had to bring the government side. And we did meetings culminating in signing of a, a, a memorandum of action on 31st of March, 2021. Their president, fell ill during the discussion and left. And his deputy and the secretary signed the memorandum of action. And they were happy. And we agreed that let us now look at this memorandum of action. By 1st of April, they declared a strike and went on strike. Had to bring them back. And you can see we did an addendum. You see, 1st of April. Because I remember it, uh, it's an April Fool Day. Yeah. So I thought the, the, the announcement that they were on strike was an, like an April Fool phenomenon. But they really went on strike, and people were dying. I acted quickly, brought them back. They said, oh, this area of the memorandum of action, this, uh, that area, we don't agree with them. I said, fine. You have a right to rediscuss. But you shouldn't have gone on strike. This is the same thing we are not going to achieve now. So by 9th of April, you can see there, we did an addendum to the areas of their concern. 
and fixed timeline for those things to be actualized. And they were all actualized. Their residency uh, training fund was uh, paid. The uh, issue of uh, uh, house officers addressed, Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria, because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a new modality that was put in place to reside the recruitment of house officers after they have been sworn in. That's when you are now a new medical doctor and given temporary uh, license to practice medicine by the MD, uh, Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria. You are now to be placed in hospitals. This is to help make sure that everybody gets a place. So those who don't know somebody, who don't know uh, senator, who don't know minister, who don't, you, it's done something that is done online by Medical and Dental Council so, to preserve everybody. So, Minister, so all the no, demands that I read out, mm, I were, they, to, were they the correct demands that they asked for? They were the demands that were corrected, uh, they, were, they, they called for, but I'm not going to tell you what have been done on each and every one of them. That's why I want it back on screen. All right, so let's take the demands one after the other. Yeah, take them. Uh, Minister, you remember, I mean, I can vividly remember the conversation. There were 12 of the demands yes. uh, in, uh, that we had the conversation on uh, in April this year when I invited you on the program. Good. And out of the 12 demands, have any of those, has any of those demands been met? Wonderful, yes. All of the demands? The residency uh, uh, trading fund have been released, 3 point something billion, that, and they, they submitted names, and this payment started. The house officers have been captured and then uh, been paid. They only say that about 114 house officers from that screen have not been paid. Nation, nationally, out of 40 something hospitals that are federal government owned, we are not talking about state-owned hospitals. The state-owned hospitals are different. State-owned health centers are different. But they will capture everything and heap them all on the federal government, which is very bad. But 114. Some of them are people who are supplying the details that are not uh, correct. Maybe their MDCN numbers have not been well articulated. Well, their BVN not properly done. Or there is a mistake in their bank statement. Or even in the name. So 114 is an infinitesimal number. But, Minister, it's, it's, I mean, the, 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 the old are, story of the house officer. Told, yeah. They have been told to submit these people. But the old story of the house officer that you raised, mm. the part of it is that you, you, I mean, that money has been paid. But you have, uh, the government has also removed them from the scheme of service. Why did you remove them from the scheme of service? Because house officers are now to only receive allowances. House officers have never been on scheme of service. That's a leader's manship. You cannot be on scheme of service. Let me explain to you what th that means. They, are not, they don't understand it. Scheme of service is a career path. I can do husbandship and decide not to practice medicine. Yes. So why do you place but, me on the... But the scheme of services and, is, wait a minute, is, isn't it supposed wait a minute, wait a minute, to help them be on the salary scale? Wait a minute, wait a minute. They are still on the salary scale. That's what the point I was going to make to you. But, but they are going to be getting only allowance. That's one of the no, grievances of the No, of the no, 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 no. The issue is that they are not the only ones doing internship. Pharmacists do internship. Today, as we speak. Nurses have also said they are doing internship. They are there. Physiotherapists are doing internship. Opti op opticians are doing internship. These other people, when they go on that internship and join the service, they want you to take into account that one year of housemanship or internship. Are you with me? Absolutely. But there's a salary wage structure that has captured that entry point for them. MSS1 for doctors. They receive the money. It doesn't touch their allowances, nothing. So state governments have been bombarded by people who now say, we have done husbandship here. You must put us into the state service 
and condone that our one year. Condonation means adding it to our year of service. Whatever we serve, put one year for us. They want to use it to get seniority. That's what public servants do. So commissioners for health from the 36 states and FCT, in their council on establishment, we, the head of service, is chairman or chairperson, requested and asked that a secular be done on this, that intends, not intern medical doctors, because that the interns, yeah, all the interns in the medical system Correct. have now been removed from the scheme of service. Correct. I mean, so, that one year. So it's not only the uh, it's no. not only health officer agreed, but it's part of the uh, grievance of the resident. It can doctors. be a grievance. You the thing doesn't touch your pocket. You earn your money. You earn all your allowances that are defined in your wage structure. You do your call duty as a house officer, you get it. But, but, the, but, bottom no, line, but, but the bottom line, Honorable Minister, yes. is that there, it looks at the end of the day that it's only allowance that they're getting. Huh. And that's, that's, what, that's what the resident doctors interpreted it. No, no, that no, no. removing all the medical interns I have secular from the scheme of service. I have secular sent on this because immediately they raised the alarm. I contacted the head of service. I said, you cannot do this. You can remove the allowances. And, and the woman showed me what they have done. And we looked at it. She, she even discussed it with the NMA. Everybody agreed. There's no loss. So you don't agree with them on that point? No, 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 no. no. They're just trying to give a dog a back name. So they want to increase their catalog of demands. So why, what about the insurance for medical officers? Um, Again? When, when you said the 19 doctors that died, Mm. Uh, during the uh, who, who contacted COVID-19. Nobody died. prays for anybody to die. Well, the they, of, have they been paid? In the course of Have the families been reached out to? I'm telling you now that the federal government have this insurance in place in 2020 and even this 2021. In the last uh, executive, federal executive council about uh, two months ago, the insurance was renewed. About nine point something billion premium. At the last meeting, on 22nd of July, because when they started talking about uh, that these things are not being done, they said they want to come on Cossie call to me. And I granted them a Cossie call call because they're my friends. They're my friends. I work with them. I advise them. I'm like a father to them. And I brought people from head of service, health, salaries, incomes, and wages commission, accountant general's office, government side. Yes, on this issue, what have you to say? They tendered evidence, head of service. Tender checks, photocopies of checks. They are paid to teaching hospitals for claims made. And that's on the premium and the payment made by the insurance companies. 95 checks. Okay. They, they now, I now told them, I want these claims to be matched against these 19 persons. So not. Supply the, the, the 19 families. Supply them so that even if it means giving preferential treatment in the payment of claim to these 19, because 1.7 billion has been paid, let us at least deal with this 19. And we agreed. So they are now supposed to supply the so, names so, of so, the so 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 federal government people. is ready, but they have not supplied the information that you need. They have not. So it's, it's uh, confirmed that you have not paid the 19 families? I will not know because the there is a list submitted and they were told to first go cross-check that these 19 are not in this particular list. A list of about uh, 195 uh, names or so, uh, families. So they have to go and cross-check first with Ministry of Health, who are the direct employers. And then if they're not there, the respective hospitals where these fatalities occurred we supply nest of kin because you're, you're not paying any already. You're paying families who have those people that died. Otherwise, the federal government has done its own bit. We are paid the insurance companies for, for that group life insurance. But you, it's, you, it's, you, 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 there's no way you can confirm whether or not those 19 uh, families are NAD, NAD is supposed to reach me back. So it's, you are putting after the meeting, back to the After NAD. a meeting of 22nd July, where this instruction was given, go and vet and capture how many of these 19 names 
are in the payments already done. Okay. Those who are not there, yeah. we'll give them accelerated their treatment. So, um, so the Minister of Health said something yesterday, yes. which the resident doctors find, found very untrue, according to the interview that the resident doctors uh, mm. granted yesterday. What is it? They said that, uh, the, the minister said, uh, seven out of those demands are state affairs. And uh, from the conversation that we're having with oh. the resident doctors, all of these demands that were listed are federal government responsibilities. No, a lot of them are state affairs. Okay, let's look at the, the demands again. Yes. And maybe we should be able to identify yes. which of them it's... Uh, if you can put up the, the, the demands of the, of, uh, the resident doctors again. Um, from the withdrawal of circular removing house officers from the scheme of service. Mm -hmm. That's one of the demands. That yes. Head of service, that's a federal head now of service. Now, the, the, the place they have problem is that they said Lagos State, or one other state. We, we read the circular, and they're now using it to, uh, is it amputate their, their, their salaries or, or allowances? I don't know what I, if you're not talking. But this is not a federal issue anymore, because the, the head of service office have issued a, a, a circular re-emphasizing the aspect of what is being said here, the intent and purpose of this circular. But she has done so. No, she has also even done a press release. Minister, the, so the, the question, when, when, when the, the resident doctors are made to look like their, uh, their grounds for going on strike is mm -hmm. unfounded, mm -hmm. that they should be talking to the state uh, government, is what I want us to identify here. Like this and one now. Found, the, the, the first one. This one now, they have to talk to the Lagos state government. No, but this one, the withdrawal of the circular removing house officers, we, we talked about the issue of the house officers just now. Yes. And you were explaining. Yes. But it does look like it also affects the federal government no we have not we have not done any 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 removal of anything because there's nothing to remove okay so let's there look at the second one in let's our, look at it the because there are 10 team. of them on the screen that one of 14 house officers are yet to be paid i about have three explained to six this months. and i told you that uh, th that's from mdcn placing uh, uh, house officers in centers and payment coming from Akantanjara's office that if we don't give a correct bvm if you don't give a, a, a correct bank account, it's going to affect you. But it's a federal government responsibility. Sure, sure, sure. So, um, so, so it's we are identifying one after the yes, other, and, and which one is state and which one is federal. Correct. We said bring the names of these 114 officers. So the, one, the third one, the doctors on Give Me's platform mm. are yet to be paid between three to seven month salaries. The UCTA, they gave example, and all the examples that they gave here yes. are federal government institutions. Correct. Okay. Let's go to the fourth one. This one... It's, been, it's already handled too. But it's not perfected. It's within them. So because the, like, uh, like ASU, I form a standing committee between Akantanjara's office, the particular union in question, and the employers, Ministry of Education or National University Commission. And it's working smoothly. Any, but any but it has not, it's not perfected. So when they say that they are, they are demanding for it, that means they've given you from but April, they have a standing April this committee. year. But it has not been perfected, Honorable no, Minister. You made these promises. No, it's still no, in progress, no. is it? This, this, we discussed this in July 22. And I agreed that that standing committee should go and report back to me when they finish the work. They have not finished. 22nd July is just the other day. And by, by 2nd of uh, August, you go on strike. All right. Let's look at the, uh, the, the fourth, the fifth, and we go to the... I just wanted us to tick uh, yes. the boxes and see which go one on, is the federal on. government. I, I enjoy and it. So, um, the capturing of uh, an migration of their members from GiveMeet to IP's payment platform, that's also, from my understanding, is federal government, isn't it? Minister? It's inter interwoven with the other. It's the same thing. It's a standing committee. What is it? it's a, I, we're saying the items are federal government. Go on, go on. Yes. So the fifth one is that medical residency training funds yet to be paid for 2020 and 2021. That's, that's a, a big, federal that, government. That's a big lie. 2020 it was paid. And even in payment of 2020, the resident doctors injected names of people who are, are not, are not uh, qualified to receive the money. They also, we have some of their members who have finished residency uh, program left that we have also paid because they supplied the names. But if now, you... some of their members now didn't get because those who are not fit and proper persons to get this money have taken the money. They pledged, the resident doctors pledged that they will get those people to do the refund. You know, government and how it works. 
you have not expended that 2020 well. 2021 is captured in the service-wide vote because it's one of their, uh, their, 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 their problems that they say they have. Budget Office of the Federation tendered evidence that is in 2021. Uh, all supplementary. Right. Yeah, so... Uh, and, uh, on that service-wide vote. So once they reconcile the 2020 utilization, expenditure, because government insists on retirement of money given to you. Uh, all right. So the, once they reconcile it, the, the other one will be released. This very exercise is for us to just look at this yes, and on. identify which one is federal. I because like we are due for a break. Uh, That's the 51. Yes. Agreed also that that 51 is still federal government. Yes. So let's look at the 61. Yes. Acute shortage of residents in all tertiary health institutions in the country with its attendant burnout effect on their members. This is caused by the ongoing brain drain and made worse by the bureaucratic bottlenecks in employment in Nigeria. I don't know what that doesn't they, look I like a state. I don't know what that means. I don't know. It's part of on their list no, that no, is sent no, to no. you. A, so that's a, federal government that, also. No, no, no. They no, say no. on the eighth one. All centers, all centers mini, are doing recruitment of resident doctors now. Last week. Minister, just, uh, just yeah. quickly. So mm -hmm. the eighth one is salary shortfalls from 2014, 2015, and 2016. That's from our, my understanding. It's also federal government. Hazard allowance is still 5,000 naira despite several meetings and the several and agreement. Several meetings. They are the ones who drew the meeting back. And this, the, the, the issue of the insurance. The federal government has a hazard allowance, 37.5 billion. I'm uh, coordinating that meeting on behalf of the presidential uh, committee on uh, salaries, which I coach here with uh, the Minister of Finance. I've had six meetings. We had two meetings. It was at the third meeting that the doctors made a vote face and said they want payment compartmentalized into four. All right, on Minister, the MSSK. We, we are due so for a break. Who do you blame? Yeah, Minister, we are due for a break. Yeah. So, what the essence of going through this list is mm. to identify which is state and which is uh, federal. Mm. Out of the ten, it was only one that you were able to identify as state. No, go on. But, but, but let's, let's take a break and we'll come back to it, Minister. Yes, yes. And when we return, we get more on the stance of the federal government and the explanation of the Ministry of Labor on the doctor's strike and its attendant uh, consequences. Join us again, everyone. everyone for staying with us right here on Politics Today in China's Television. The Minister of Labor and Employment, Senator Chris Ingege, is our guest tonight. And it's about the resident doctor strike, the nationwide uh, strike of the National Association of Resident Doctors that we're talking about, and which they say is total and indefinite. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister, Thank for your you. time tonight. Yeah. We've been able to identify mm. that most of their demands are federal government responsibilities. No, no, no. No, we, we, we listed, we went through it. Yes, uh, I mean, because of time, we won't, we won't have to go over, over it again. Have, but it was uh, only one that, uh -huh. that you are able to say, okay, that is state. But all of those 10 are basically uh, federal government uh, um, responsibility. But, but both of the, them have been treated. The ones that are federal government uh, responsibilities have been treated. That's what I'm telling you. But not perfected. No, They're no, no. What do you mean by perfected? If I did something 95% for you, 95% is distinction. You said you've, pay, you've you made payments to, to those, uh, the, the, the families of the late doctors, but they said they've not received. The family said they've not received it. No, 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 no. That's not what I said. No, I the said, federal, no I what said, I'm saying listen, is that the, the federal government... The insurance is for health workers, not only for doctors. Is it only doctors that are, are prone to COVID attack? No, but we're talking about the doctors yeah, so now. Yes, so that's what I'm saying. So, so they brought a list that they have 19 doctors that died in different centers. The Ministry of uh, Health, in conjunction with the Office of Head of Service, brought a list of families that have been paid under this insurance scheme, group life which is a part of a, a, a PENCOM Act that government must do, or any employer must do, group life insurance for our worker. So this is what is there. So out of these 19, we have taken back the list at our 22nd July meeting and said NARD, Ministry of uh, Health, Office of Head of Service, uh, Service Welfare, go and vet this, your, your payments, and see how many of the 19 doctors' families are there. Those, if you, if you vet, and you discover that it is 10, we then know that we, we have nine left. That nine will give accelerated payment 
should do to be done. So that's the point I, I, made, I made. So if you list anything that is federal government here, and it has been 95% done or 100% done, so why do you, why do you list it as they, a they say They say that uh, they, they, they wanted to meet you since they, they, they gave out this notice mm. that you have not met them. Why haven't you met them? No, I them? won't meet them why? anymore. I won't because I have other things to do. I did some two consultations again yesterday. Am I going to be wasting time with them? You, by, you, do you count it as second, a waste They said they were happy. They said they were happy. If you look at the media, they were praising me and said that I am kind, I'm compassionate. Uh, they are advising uh, work, uh, public servants in Nigeria to behave like me. Because I took the issue seriously. And where government officials are wrong, I tell them. And I give them a, an ultimatum of, on, and time frame to perfect or do whatever it is. So why do you go on strike one week after? You can't. So on that basis, you won't meet them? No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not meeting them. But they're, they're saying that this strike is indefinite. No problem. I have other tools permitted for me by labor laws. And I will do it. Is it true that you have invoked Section 143 of... Uh, Section 43. Section 43 I invoked you this afternoon. You did? You yes. did? Have you this communicated afternoon, with them? I've communicated it to that. And what they does that mean? They will not receive money for the period of strike. And it will never count as a period for pensionable position in their career. Is that a fair position? That's what it is. It's, uh, it's, 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 uh, even the ILO supports it. Because they're on essential, essential services. They're not supposed to go on strike without notifying me 15 days to that day of strike. But they, they said they, they notified you. No, they didn't. If you look at the timeline they that said, we showed you, no, Minister, no. there was a notice that they that's wrote. That's a meeting. That's a meeting. Don't, there's what we call trade dispute notification. Trade dispute, TDN. I'm, I'm not a labor man. I'm a labor officer now. No, but there's a TDN they have not done that. If you look at they the history me, of the conversation. Listen, listen, I got you. They sent me a communique of their meeting in Umuahia. And that communique listed the grievances and resolutions. That's not a notification. It's a resolution of a meeting. I'm not part of the meeting. So they must communicate me directly. So legally, you've not received any notification I've, from up them? Up to as we speak, I've not received any notification. But, and that is why I'm, I'm invoking Section 43 of the uh, Labor Act on withdrawal of services, right to strike, and the right to protect the employer and their patients. So I have to. If that happens and they still not call off the strike, what would you do? No, I have other. Don't worry. Don't worry yourself. No, because in that letter that you, you, you wrote to NAD, mm -hmm. there are other provisions that you have stated to them. But well, you saw the letter? I'm privy to some information, okay. Honorable Minister. Okay. Things will happen next week. Let them wait. So is that because they're taking together? government for a ride. And it's wrong. They're playing with people's lives. It's wrong. My children are medical doctors. They are. And I want them not to uh, be, be, be uh, dealing with this thing, nonsense strike. But if the, uh, at, what at, if at the every, government, every, uh, even if the government is not, if how the, can you be doing that? If, even if the government is not making true to his own promise and keeping no, it inside of the No, no, I'm not telling you that government has made true to his promise. No, we have listed some of these they things. They are aware that the 2020 payment for residency training fund had uh, some problems. Those problems are criminal in nature, anyway. Supplying names of people who are not in service. But we decide to gloss over all those things. And in any case, it is on this program that I told you that residency doctors in Nigeria are being paid something while in, in training. For exams, for books, for this and that. And they denied it. That is the residency training fund they're talking about. So the 2021 residency fund, evidence was produced by the Budget Office of the Federation that is in the service-wide vote. Government doesn't pay you money unless you retire the one earlier on giving you. That's what they, they call it, retirement. That the money was used effectively and efficiently for the purpose it designated. They know it. So once that area is cleaned up, they will release their, their money. Is there. So you're but the money will not be released to the college. So you're I'm devised that it should go to the college and not to the institution anymore because of uh, 
uh, the, 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 the malfunctioning we saw the last time. So your resolve now is no work, no pay. Why not? It's and the law. I didn't make it. You sort of threaten them that they might lose their jobs. Listen, if you go to ILO principles at work, it guarantees a worker right to strike. But it has consequences. Your, your, your employer on essential services in particular has a right to replace you. He will also withdraw your money, your, your, your remuneration, and use it to pay those he has so acquired at those period you were away. So Nigeria, being a member of ILO, in our Trade Dispute Act 2004, Section 43, it is there to protect both the worker and the employer. So all these instruments, in, you are going to put it into effect fully, 100%? I will. Okay, so now... Uh, Next week, I will escalate it because the conciliation has failed. So and if the law says if conciliation fails, on my own side, I can move it up. Industrial so, Arbitration Panel or National Industrial Court of Nigeria? So you're giving them seven days, yes. from what I understand. Yes. And seven days started from today. No, from Monday. The, no, but the, the, you, gave them, you asked them to resume today. The no, minister no, no, told no, them no, to no. resume today. They started today. a strike on Monday, which is second. My seven days terminates on this Monday. Next Monday. Yes. So uh, after which you, you I sacked will them. Or, I will invoke other things that are allowed by law. But, but I mean, uh, based on your understanding I didn't of, say sack. Other things uh, that are permitted by law. Like what? Their employer have a right to replace them. That's a sack. The they That's were, an interpretation no, to a sack. It doesn't matter what, the, what you want to term it. But when you replace, when you remove someone from his work, that's sack. Maybe you, you can do that on a dog basis. You can use what they call locum doctors. You can use uh, well, where, would they, where would you get these locum doctors don't worry, from? Don't worry, don't worry. Honorable Minister, because these doctors, resident doctors, from what I understand, they form about over 40% of the population of uh, the, the, the doctors in Nigeria. And how many doctors do you know are outside that want to go into residency program and are not, unable to go in? How many? I know. So that's on the premise in which I know. you want to discard so this one. If you want to get uh, uh, the statistics, ask the CMDs to tell you. They apply, I know. National Hospital conducted interviews <laughs> just, uh, is it this week or last week? I don't know, but they have a place for residents for about uh, 80 residents or thereabout. They have 3,000 applications. So you have people on the standby to take the There are many people on the standby. But are you aware that one of the gra uh, grievances of these resident doctors is the state of, the med uh, of medicine practice in Nigeria and the issue of brain drain? There is a number of Nigerian doctors trained here who are willing to leave the country every day they, and they live in droves. They live in droves because the right things have not been done here, even in terms of their own employment. Whose fault is that? We train medical doctors, including me, at the expense of ordinary Nigerians. Yes, I was trained. I was on scholarship. At that point, I even enjoyed two scholarships. You know how much it costs to train a, me a medical doctor abroad, America or, U or, or UK? You know how many of them uh, uh, borrow money to pay? They go to the bank, borrow money and train themselves. And for the next 20 years, they're forever paying back. That's why somebody can get up in Nigeria, pack his bag, because he has been trained at government expense, at the people's expense, from national budget, and then walk away and go elsewhere to give the expertise. And people are clapping. It's wrong. Nigerians are not happy about it. It's, it's, it's an unpatriotic Because, act. I mean, if you go to Texas in the United States, go to the UK, in several other places in Europe, there are a lot of Nigerians who are practicing. In Saudi Arabia, a lot of Nigerians are... But that's not they, a good they thing. Received, Min they received free trading. But that's not the point. They I mean, received it. The point is that it's a sad story for them leaving the country. Shall and if, 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 if government is not providing the right premise and the right environment for them to work, the, isn't that a sad story? The government have done much in terms of providing the equitable environment. Federal government in particular, I can tell you. 
I, I know what the year budget is for the past 25 years to 30 years. I worked in Federal Ministry of Health. I was in the Department of Hospital Services that's in charge of Federal Medical Centers and Teaching Hospitals. So I know what health budget is in terms of doctor's training. I supervised that, that desk for two years or, or two and a half years. Uh, I supervised residency training. So what I'm telling you is that health, as a matter of fact, is on concurrent list. It's bifurcated. State governments are doing health or supposed to do health. But everything here is federal, 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 federal. Nobody's talking about state hospitals and whatever. Uh, because, uh, I mean, the reason why I brought up that issue is because of the warning and the thought that you have given to these resident doctors. I'm, not, I'm not giving them a threat. No, no. I'm, it, a, I'm going to the law. We're, we're, we're under the rule of law. You are done. There's, not, there's the, nothing else I can do. Okay, so now the question if, is... If uh, you finish conciliation with me, shake hands with your employers and thank everybody and we thank you, and you now go to uh, your neck meeting, there is preponderance of state resident doctors there in the meeting. And this will have been oh, 10, 10 months. They, they said, oh, my hair is owing them 17 months. Uh, some people, uh, uh, oh, uh, eight months, just like that. And you now, because you have preponderance of those persons, they are not benefiting from residency training fund, which the federal government is doing for their own people. They are not benefiting from uh, 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 COVID special inducement, which was one of the biggest paid here in Africa, because uh, <laughs> labor ministers in Africa, we compared notes. Then you allow those doctors from the states to overwhelm you, and then you pass a vote of uh, going on strike seven days after a meeting. The same thing they did, after meeting with me on 31st of March, they went on strike on uh, 1st April. And later on came back to now start uh, dotting some things they say they don't like as an addendum and with producers that addendum on the 7th. By the time we are producing this addendum, they have been on strike for 10 to 12 days. And people who are not well to do to pay for private uh, treatment, who rely on public hospitals, a lot of them have died. A lot of them cannot be accounted for. Mm. And so, you say it's a matter I will treat with key glove. No, my gloves So are, you have wait, invoked no, the, the stick now. You've used the carrot based on your explanation. Now is the time to use I the I will stick. use it. And by next week, if they're not back, I will condone the 10, 10 11 days that they, that, that they did in um, uh, April into the no work, no pay. Because they didn't work. And they want to receive the money or they have received the money, we deduct it. Because taking money for work not done is corruption. Yes, no, it's not done anywhere in the world. So, Minister, I've, what is the federal government doing on this matter of brain drain? Are you, are you worried about the fact that Nigerians, young Nigerians trained here and live in the country based on the environment they say is not conducive to practice? Excuse me, uh, Sheung, I have dealt with this matter. If the federal government of Nigeria had increased the training fee for undergraduate medicine, and now you go and borrow money from the bank and pay your school fees for medicine, and by the time you finish, you have incurred a loan from the bank of about eight to 10 million, you think that person will just get up and uh, carry his bag and move? That's one of the problems. Number two, state governments have not done what they're supposed to do. They are leaving everything held to federal government. And people are in the states, they're not talking about it. These doctors are there. NMA in the states are there. Health commissioners are doctors in most places that are there. So what do you want federal government to do? When our own hospitals, we are kitting them, upgrading them on a daily basis. We have done 35 molecular labs in every place, 36, because the existing ones. Oxygen plants, 36, plus the existing ones. Equipments, 
of all sorts. Plenty of billions have gone into health. But a lot of people still cannot take medical attention here in Nigeria. They still have to travel abroad. I don't a lot know. of politically for exposed me, people for me. are still having to travel out for it medical tourism. It depends on you. Me, if you have the means and you want to do second opinion abroad, why not? It's permitted. I have my daughters here. I deal with them. But that doesn't mean that any time I want to do a, 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 a medical uh, checkup abroad, that I don't do that. I do that. I've been doing medical checkup for myself. So you are saying that everything is perfect about the Nigerian medical sector, that nobody needs I, to travel I out? Have, I have not said uh, not everything is perfect. I have said that vis-a-vis -vis what we have on ground and the situation, the political situation we have, where we are practicing a federation and where health is on concurrent list, the federal government have decided its own functions well for me. So based on that, for an average Nigerian, there's no need to travel abroad for medical attention. Is that what you're saying? What, what are you going abroad to do? So every yes, every, every is possible there. is here. Is here. We have every expertise. possible thing that needs to be done medical-wise in, in medical science is here in Nigeria. Can be dealt with. What are you talking about? Yes. The most sophisticated of them? No. The most sophisticated of them? No. Well, after all, Nigeria has not been going to the moon. The Americans are going to the moon. Th that's not medical science, but I'm talking about uh, medical yes. science. Yes, so I'm using it to tell you that there's some advancement in medicine that are not yet here. Yeah, there is. But things, I mean, so in the last two or three years, you think the things have so improved that Nigerians now need to stay at home? I, I don't know what you mean by that, but I'm telling you that on a, on a, on a good note, on average note, on a comparative note, medical treatment here is fairly okay as far as I'm concerned. Yes, at least if you, if you visit the federal medical centers. So, I use the National Hospital here. You can go. My card is there. I use the uh, status clearing for my eye. It's there. I use uh, 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 another private hospital here. And every year, I correlate every, everything and do a, my annual check. L let's wrap up the conversation Sorry, around the you. resident doctors. Uh, you said uh, in the conversation today that mm. they're like your children. Yes. Uh, and I said I have two, 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 two practicing uh, medical yes, doctors. Yes, my, my son and my daughter. Yeah, so if they are like your children, mm. uh, do you have any word of uh, uh, admonishment for them they to come go back, back to, to work? work? They should go back to work. They should go back to work. Are you going to... I'm a fair assessor. I'm a fair assessor. I'm a very fair person in assessing things. They should, they should be able to tell you. In government side, vis-a-vis -vis them, uh, the uh, uh, NRD meetings, I admonish government officials. I take extra time. I have taken extra time to go to Akantanjera's office to see about some of their complaints. The Akantanjera nearly flew out of the window when he saw me come there. And I advised uh, NAD, put up a standing committee like ASU have done. ASU people know whatever is going on in budget office, in Akantanjera's office. That's why we have less friction now. And they're happy. I have also created labor desk in all these uh, social uh, ministries, education and health. Interestingly, uh, yes. Minister, uh, I wish I, I thought I would be able to touch on ASU, but time will not permit us. No, but ASU, a... ASU is quiet. We're okay. We are, we are... You said this about the, the resident doctors the other time. Now we are back here. <laughs> I hope I will not no, be back no, at no, this kind of no. discussion. Resident on the, doctors, on the, on the case resident of the doctors are on, a, they are on a, a, a competition. Which will? Every, every president of medical doctor that come, if he doesn't go on strike, then it's not known. It doesn't have a tenure. Okay. And that is what I, 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 I win them off from. Okay. Uh, so they, uh, they should not be drinking that milk. I will remove it from their mouth. Yes. They should stop striking at every... If 10 of your members don't receive a salary due to uh, some minor, minor adjustment or misinformation on the uh, platform, you go and strike. Uh, I don't mean it's if, uh, <laughs> if you are people in the state hospitals don't receive a residency training fund, which is an act, and the state governor or government have not done it, instead of people going to picket that hospital or that government house or going on site there, 
you come and do a national strike. I don't really uh, we, we need to go now. River State uh, Governor has invoked for Section 43 before me. Because he's paying. And why should he go, uh, people in rivers go on strike? So, uh, there are so many state governments like that. There's, there's a question no. I'd like to ask you. No, we, we won't uh, do it. Minister, I have one more minute, uh, just about 50 seconds, actually. Yes. Before, um, because of what I hear about uh, Southeasterners in the federal cabinet. Yes. Uh, is what it, did you hear? Is it all looking good for uh, an Igbo presidency in the APC in 2023? Why did you particularize it uh, with the uh, No, no, I'm Igbo asking because I cabinet. know you're a senior politician in this cabinet. Yes. Yeah, and that's why I'm am. asking you. And you are one of those who said that it would be good for the rotation to go to the southeast in 2023. Yes, I said so. so. But is it looking good? Well, it's too early in the day to say whether it's looking good or not. But I, I reiterate what I told you, that to enable us bury the ghost of... Biafra and the Nigeria Biafra civil conflict. If we move that to the south and the southerners are they are patriotic enough, they are visionary enough mm. to allow the southeast to produce or allow the Igbos. Does the body the language south. of the president look like it, it might allow for that? The president is not a hardcore politician. So on these matters, you can't read his body language very easily. <laughs> we need to leave it at that. Uh, Senator Dr. Chris Ngige, <laughs> Honorable Minister for Labor and Employment, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you. I appreciate you, your Sean. time for coming. You're welcome. That's our show for today, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean Wakimale. We'll see you again at p.m. on Sunday. Bye-bye.